First up is Tamara, a home cook from Calgary, Alberta, who likes to spice things up. I grew up in a very multicultural area. I learned a lot of my cooking from tasting. A lot of my dishes are uh, Indian and Asian based because a lot of my friends' parents were uh, first generation Canadian. I got to learn from the best. I take this so seriously. I'm a teacher in my day job, and I gave up my career to be able to come here and do something different. I need to win this apron so bad. I want to prove it to myself, to my family. I want it. Each home cook will have five minutes to plate their signature dish. Oh my goodness! She sounds feisty. If their dish gets a yes from at least two of the three judges, they will win a white apron and move on to the next stage of the competition. Hello there. What's your name? Tamara. What are you cooking for us today? Traditional samosas, vegan style with uh, potato, pea, and cashew masala. Wow, you've got five minutes to get it all done. Time starts now. Thank you very much. So if you're from Alberta, I'm surprised you're not cooking beef. I wanted to go a little bit outside the box. We got a gambling gal. Risk taker, absolutely. I actually put myself through university playing poker. You like poker? I love poker. Perfect. Why are you tasting those sauces? Are they store bought absolutely something? Absolutely not. If I don't taste it before I plate it, how am I supposed to know that exactly the seasonings are correct? I want to make sure that it needs enough salt, it needs enough whatever, and if it doesn't, I can adjust it on the plate. Did you grow up in a household full of food? Food to me is emotion. And if you don't show emotion in your food, then I don't think you're succeeding. I like how clean you work. Thank you very much, Chef. Very important. It is. Where did this dish come from? My parents weren't around a lot. My father passed away at a young age, and my mother was incapacitated. One of the friend's houses I lived at was an East Indian family from Pakistan. She taught me everything I know. It's not overly hot. It's nice aromatic flavors. The dough is good and crisp. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Are you nervous? With you, yes, yeah, Chef. <laughs> Poker play don't show you if they're nervous. So you got two sauces here. I did the tamarind with a bitter flavor, and the mango is sweet. So I personally blend both, but depends on your palate. Sweet and sour. That's a Chinese combination. Everybody say I have a poker face. Try to beat this face. <clears throat> Last one in, which means I can use my hands. Please. Which is the way they're meant to be eaten. Absolutely. What sauce is this? Sweet, spicy green mango. Mm. It's not authentic. Yes, needed to bring something of myself to the plate. Not sure how I feel about that. Tamara, for someone to come from Alberta, where they have the best beef in Canada, and do a vegetarian samosa, it's either stupid or brilliant. Yes, chef. In your case, it's clearly brilliant. It's a yes for me. I'm known as a chef who takes tremendous risks with food. Yes, chef. And I'm known to get incredible returns from those risks. I was blown away by the flavors. For that reason, I'm a yes. <laughs> Ma, come on up here. Absolutely yes. Thank you so much. What is the greatest feeling in poker, having the world flush when everyone is all in. I definitely have what it takes to be Canada's first master chef. Oh my goodness! This is just the best experience in the whole entire world. Tamara, tell me what your dish is. I'm doing a take on a Vietnamese spring roll. I'm marinating some schmelk in sake, and I'm also crisping some up in cornstarch. I'm going to try some and see which one turns out better. You think that was a wise decision? I'm going to try to impress today. I'm not playing it safe, that's for sure. Good luck. Thank you very much, Chef. One minute. Move. Here we go. You should be plating. 
Finishing touches on those plates, please. Don't even care. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Heads up! Woo! Good job. What do we have here? I did my take on a Vietnamese salad roll with uh, soba noodles, sesame oil, chili paste, marinated the fish in some sake, and fried them. I notice you keep pulling the Asian card. Yeah. First I did Indian. Asian. Then I did Chinese. Asian. And then I did Vietnamese. Asian, again. I'm trying to go around the world. Maybe skip Asian next time. They're delicious. Thank you. I wish there were more. The smelts, though. Thank you. Tamara, I like the presentation. It looks very nice. I was trying to go big and not go home. Sounds like a good strategy. I really like the flavors. I think it's a very smart dish. Well done. Thank you very much. I am not just a one-trick pony. I can do other things other than Asian, and I'm definitely going to bring it. OK, so what do you want to do? Okay. We could do a hot bellini, dill and caviar, like total traditional. I'm not looking for traditional. We are in an art district right now. Yeah. Food oh, as art as a challenge is kind of scaring the crap out of me right now. OK, let's not argue about this yeah. shit. Yeah. Let's just figure it out. Yeah. The menu plan, I actually thought in my head it was going to be a lot smoother. Yeah, well, we don't got time. But then immediately we all kind of start butting heads. We have the smoking gun. Smoke let's not uh, fiddle with the smoking gun, please. No. OK, guys, let's not lose it in the very first beginning. This is my neck on the line. I'm the captain of this ship. And I don't want to go down with nothing. What okay. about um, the samosas? Do we have tamarind? So you can do an inside out samosa where you have just a piece of dough and the topping on top. Yes. OK, that's yes. a great yes. idea. Yes. OK. Eventually, Red Team decides on caviar and creme fraiche on endive, an inside out samosa, and a spiced orange petit four. How spicy do we want the samosas? Not too spicy. Not crazy. OK. OK. So Dora. Yes. Tell me what's going on. We're doing an inside out samosa. Tamara's in charge of that bad boy. Why are you making inside out? Because we want it to be one bite. A big samosa had too much wrapper and it'd be too doughy. Yeah. So we just want to make it still light and presentable. Oh, fantastic. So on the blue team, I did notice they are tasting by committee. Dale, Danielle, Kayla, and Josh seem to be doing all the tasting, which is interesting approach. Perfect. It's good, right? This going on the tuna? Yeah, I Hell think yes. it's going to be perfect Hell yes. for the tuna. Over on the red team, all the tasting has fallen to Captain Dora. I go to taste the samosa. <laughs> And it's really overpowering. Like, all I'm getting is garlic and ginger. My throat's on fire. That's pretty spicy. I can't screw this up. Dora's kind of freaking out, but none of the filling or other components are in it. You have one hour left in this cook. One hour of cook time. OK, so where are we at? Who needs what? I'm worried that we're not going to get these things on the plate. Team, we got to take a deep breath. This is where we can hoop ourselves. Just let's get focused. Let's do this. Hello there, Red Team. Hi, Chef. So what have we got here? Chef Michael comes by to taste the samosas. This here is extremely overpowering. I know that. Yes. I have the same concern, too. When he's reiterating my concern about these flavors being too strong. That would scare me to be eating that. I'm starting to freak out. Tamara, look at me. That's very strong for me. So is that going to yeah. tone down a bit? Oh, yeah, yeah. I got a lot of trust in Tamara. But if a guest eats this thing and they spit it out, we're done. That samosa filling is way over the top. It's something I do not want to eat, I don't even want to serve, and it won't go out of this kitchen if they don't fix it. Over on the red team, Tamara continues to adjust the flavors on the samosa filling. I need you to taste this. It's hot, Polly. Oh. I'm starting to feel a little bit better about the samosa. There's a little ray of sunshine, I hope. Those are delicious. 30 minutes left. 30 minutes before you present your first dish. You should be thinking about final details, presentation, garnish. Have you got it? Yes, yes, yes. Because the food must keep on rolling out, the pressure in the kitchen okay. does not let up. Yes. We got to get our butts in gear. Let's go. Let's start plating right now, guys. Start plating. And the red team is catching up. We are a hot mess, but guess what? This hot mess is putting out some good food. But they unexpectedly run out of serving options for their hot canapé. Dora, what do you want the samosas on? Uh, you just please make a choice. The only vessel left is a small wine glass. What do you think of this? It's a little weird. And in this challenge, presentation is as important as taste. I cannot put a samosa inside a cup. If it's inside, they have to reach their hands Okay, we, yeah. And so I just start putting the cups upside down and plating them on top. 
That's perfect. It's an inside out, upside down samosa. They're going to love it. It's innovative. Inside out samosa on an upside down cup. Ooh, and they are vegan. Good. That's fantastic. <laughs> this is the one that you worry about. I see big smiles everywhere. That's my kind of dish. It's just balance. Cumin, coriander seed, chili. Everything is just working all together. It's all balanced. Damn, it was good. That is a restaurant quality dish. Yep, absolutely. My restaurants feature the best seasonal ingredients from across the country. Yellowfoot chanterelle, found east coast and west coast. Cipollini onions, delicious sweet Italian onions. Quinoa, very healthy grain. Mostarda, a classic Italian fruit mustard from northern Italy. Squab, deliciously gamey. And just in case you didn't know, it's pigeon. I've eaten almost all these ingredients, except for the pickled cherry mustard thing. <laughs> the pitfall with using the squab, it is very, very lean. You need to build on those flavors of that squab. It's got a mild gaminess to it, but the overcooking is the key for them. I am going to make pigeon soup or pigeon broth with some uh, Asian style noodles and some mushrooms. Hey, Tamara. Hi, chef. Fresh noodles, fresh broth. Yes, yeah, chef. A pigeon broth. That's delicious. Thank you, chef. Incredible. Looks like you've been kind of flying under the radar. Is this your chance to really come out? This shine? is exactly my chance to come out and yeah. shine. Very, very impressive so far. I love this. Five minutes. You have five minutes left. Your final five minutes. Not a time to be in confusion. Now is the time to get ready. I'm shaking too bad. Wow, there's some very interesting looking dishes happening out there. Everyone's raising their game here. I think it's my yelling. <laughs> Tamara is making a soup with fresh cut noodles. Where's she getting noodles from? She made them. Oh, wow. She wants to win. My noodles turned out perfect, and the broth is super, so this dish is for the judges. Can you tell me a little about your dish, please? An Italian-Asian fusion dish with Italian noodles and Asian broth. The broth, I love the color, that rich golden brown. It's amazing. Thank you, chef. If I would change one thing on this dish, I would look for a little of that pigeon meat nestled under the noodles or in between that just popped out every once in a while. Very nicely done. Thank you. Looks very nice. The richness and the city, the perfect balance. That, to me, it's a very, very nice dish. Thank you, chef. The Nanaimo bar. I've had one or two back in the day when I was a kid. Never really liked them. That's right. The Nanaimo bar is the inspiration for the dessert that you'll be making today. We want you to elevate this everyday sweet by taking all the elements of the Nanaimo bar and reconstructing them. I've never made a Nanaimo bar before. I have nowhere to even begin. I have no clue how to make them. That's fine. I come from rural Alberta, and there's nothing better to do but bake and get fat. Today, I'm uh, going to hopefully impress my grandma, and I'm making a deep-fried Nanaimo bar pierogies. Well, I'm here to the end, man. There's no way I'm going home. The home cooks have 60 minutes to elevate the classic Canadian Nanaimo bar to a restaurant-quality dessert. What the hell is burning? My caramel burn. At the end of this challenge, at least one home cook will be sent home. This challenge is going to be really difficult for these cooks, and I'm happy that I'm watching from the gallery. Do you have any cream, Pino? Yeah. Can I borrow just a smidge? I just need a touch. Thanks, son. You're welcome. I need to make that soft custardy stuff. Eggs, cream, milk. Sometimes we help each other out, but step by step, how do I do this? How do I do this? How do I do that? I found that very strange. Tamara, what do you think? Honestly, Carly has to ask Tamara in top nine, how to make a custard. Add cornstarch to cold water and then mix it in the mixture. You're doing something that you don't know how to do. It's, it's what I would have done. It's just more of making sure that you're doing it the right way. Tamara. Yes, chef. Tell me what you're working on. Uh, today, I am making uh, two types of deep-fried pierogies. 
And what kind of dough is that? Uh, it's a chocolate, cocoa. You think this is the winning dish? Absolutely, chef. Suitable for a high-class restaurant? I can guarantee it, chef. This is down to the final few, and this is when I want to really shine. Well, I wish you the best of luck with it. Thank you. Danielle chooses Nanaimo bars, thinking that that would be the most difficult thing. But she doesn't know that I have these aces up my sleeve, and they're starting to come out. My grandma always makes pierogies, and she also always makes Nanaimo bars. I wanted to do a recreation of a Nanaimo bar into a pierogi form. I like the texture. You got the chocolate inside, the coconut. Wow. Presentation, it's lighthearted and fun. And the pierogies are good. You should be very proud. Thanks, so. Chef. If she keeps pulling out dishes like she did today, she very well could be my competition. There were two standout desserts today. The home cook who made the best one reinterpreted the Nanaimo bar in a clever and inventive way. Tamara, today you played your cards right. Congratulations. I've been totally waiting for this day. There's only seven people in my way to win $100,000 and most importantly, the first MasterChef Canada title. Tamara, you also get first choice in choosing your team. This person cooks with spice and I need double the spice. I pick Marita. Being the first pick is flattering. It shows that she thinks that I'm someone who could help her team win. Eric, who are you gonna choose? First person I'm gonna pick is really a no-brainer. He's a wizard when it comes to Italian food. My first pick is Pino. Pino is gonna be the key to winning this challenge. I pick Mike. I hate team challenges, because I'm always in the bottom. Yeah. I choose Danielle. I don't want to be picked last again. I'm always picked last. So tomorrow, who's going to complete your team? So this is strategic. Eric and Kayla don't get along. So I definitely pick Julie. So Eric, how do you feel now that you have Kayla on your team? I feel perfectly great having Kayla on my team. I'm absolutely nervous having Kayla on my team, but I'll try to make it work. <laughs> Tamara. Yes, Chef. We're giving you one more advantage. Perfect. You have the option of trading a member of your team <laughs> for someone on the red team. Perfect. Think carefully. I am a poker player, so I have a lot of strategy. I really like to plan every move. So I would like to switch uh, Pino for Julie. Tamara decides to take Pino from my team. Yeah, it does suck a bit, but it surprised me that she gives me another Italian. It's a good move, trust me. I think we'll work fine together. I'm still confident. So now I'm on the Italiano team, and I'm happy because I do not like Mexican food. Okay, guys. Okay. So start, start talking, Tamara. Okay. For sure, we're gonna do a taco, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Taco. So, this is a big challenge for me. This is the first time I'm team captain. This is where I want to shine. I'm thinking, I'm thinking a steak taco, and we can either braise it, grill it, or whatever. We have to put on a plate that's worth five dollars and make it delicious. I'm thinking on the side a ceviche with uh, tortilla chips. Tamir decides to do a ceviche. You might be a little ambitious here. There's so many components. I think that's too much. Let's just do one taco. I don't, I don't think that's enough, you guys. The ceviche. I feel all that arguing and what to do, what to do, the less time we're going to have making it. We need to make a decision now. Okay. What do you guys think? I think that's good. Yeah, yeah. OK. Go. So glad we picked Mexican. It was a great choice. Tamara, yes, give me a couple of minutes. Tell me what you're working on. What's yes, on the chef? menu? We're going to do a flank steak taco with uh, a red and uh, green sauce and some charred corn. We're okay. also going to do a shrimp ceviche. You're going to do a ceviche? Yes, chef. Personally, I would say drop the shrimp. Stick to one, make it delicious. OK. All right, you can yes. do that? Yes, chef. Pino, you hear that? No shrimp. Chef Michael suggests to scrap the ceviche. Great idea. Now our menu is more focused, and right away we get to work. Salt, salt, salt. Yeah, 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 yeah. 60 minutes has gone by. There's a big crowd building up, and you'll be feeding them in 60 minutes. 60 minutes? Come on, guys. we got to move a little bit faster here. Come on, get out here. Yes, chef. 
Look, you got one guy, you got cutting by himself. Thank Somebody you, should be helping him. Yes, sir. Okay, Mike, you're here, okay? Use your team efficiently. Yes, sir. Or else you're not gonna be able to get the food out on time. Yes, okay? sir. Yes, sir. We're gonna run out. These steaks could take us down. While the blue team struggles to get caught up on their meat prep, the red yeah. team has a sub finished and ready to sample. That's good. I like the basil on it. Eric, yes, one thing chef. you cannot afford to have is raw meatballs Absolutely, today. Absolutely, chef. I do not want to get one complaint. One man see this big crowd behind me. They're going to be attacking the food truck in one minute. OK, let's start putting stuff together right now. Where are the taco shells? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, Let's go right five, now. Let's make some four, right go, now. Three, go. two, okay. one. Time's up. I see a huge, gigantic line coming over to our truck, so now I'm even panicking more. Hi there. Sure. One taco, one behind. Let's go. Do you want order? Two. Wait. What the hell? Yeah. Our lineup's not moving because we're not getting food out there quick enough. Nine total. Nine tacos now. We need yes, a station yes. to yes. be clear. It's just a mess in the food truck at this point. Promo. Fuck. Pandemonium. Mike is slow. Gently placing meat on the cheese, putting a nice dollop of sauce. It's cute for at home, but not a food truck. Tamara, I think you should be here. Mike okay. should be there. Yeah. Okay. Marie was like, Mike, just, just get in the friggin' window. And I was like, OK, good. That's where I want to be. I want to talk to the customers anyways. Everyone's just working their tails off. Where is the onion? These are all perfectly yeah. cooked. These are all cooked. While the red team loses time double-checking Eric's meatballs, the blue team takes the opportunity to steal back some customers. This is my big chance. The red team put on a plate that's raw, and I think that's great. This is our time to step ahead. We need someone to go work the crowd, to, you know, do some magic. So I quickly grab a dish, and I start working the crowd, showing people, other customers who, who bought food from the town truck, look what we have. How you doing over there? Have we tried the Mexican yet? Mexicana. We have a marinated flank steak in there. This is just what comes on the side. We have two different types of craft cheese. One's spicy, one's not. I'm Italian, they're going to do a piccolo base of each in Napoli, but oggi sono andato to Mexico. I'm the Italian who's converted today. So I tell him, I'm Italian, but I've gone Mexican. Tell him Pino sent you, and they'll take good care of you. One minute, you have one minute left. Right, here we go. You do. Andale, andale. One more, one more, guys. We're rocking it, Eric. We're rocking it. Can you just ask them if they want spicy or not spicy cheese? We're using the craft habanero cheese and the Tex Mex. Sure. Here, we'll give you two subs and an extra meatball each. In the dying moments of the food truck challenge, Thank both teams box. are fighting to win over the final few customers. There's no wait in our line over here. No wait. Come over here. Our line's moving way faster. Thank you very much, sir. They are hustling. Cash over! Service is over. Close the cash box now. Woo! Blue team. It makes me sick to my stomach that we are literally $15 short. $15. I was a leader. I let my team down, and I let a raw meatball out. Three tacos at the end. At the end, three tacos. When I run into that pantry, I think of two dishes, not one, and I get the ingredients for both. <sighs> feeling good about the officer, not feeling good about time. It's very easy to overcook. I want to make sure I don't do that today. I'm really interested in seeing how Tamara pulls her dish together. So far, in her basket, I saw white asparagus, green asparagus, fennel. I saw mangoes. Bloody hell, Love I don't that. know what she's doing. Tamara. Hi, Chef. So you've picked out lots of ingredients from the pantry, keeping your options open? Yes, Chef. So what are you preparing? I am doing a Caribbean Asian fusion with a little bit of curry and butter poached lobster. Any concerns with the delicate flavors of the lobster, using curry, how big and robust it can be? Yes, Chef. I'm just using curry as an accent. I'm not actually currying anything. So a subtle background. You got it, Chef. Thank you. Five minutes. Perfect. If I'm having a hard time, so is everybody else, because I know I move a lot faster than everybody. Tell me about your dish. A butter poached lobster with Thai mango slaw, with fresh peas and some red onion and some celery leaf. If you overcook a lobster, it is tough, it is rubbery, this should be moist, succulent, tender, if cooked just to the point. Do you think it's cooked to the point? 
Kesha. It doesn't disappoint. Thank you, Chef. The mango, the pink grapefruit, the shredded sugar snap peas, crisp, citrus, refreshing. Simple, but very tasty. Thank you, Chef. Every time you go in the pantry, you have two baskets with you. I like to see you have one basket and plan it out and focus a little bit more. The lobster is perfect. You could have just had this on a plate to basically show us how well you cook lobster. Thank you, Chef. Come on up, have a taste. Pork dumpling, siu mai. Hakao, shrimp dumplings. Spring rolls, crispy but not greasy. I'm ecstatic, it's dim sum. I'm like, yay! First thing I do, like any kitchen, Chinese kitchen, Western kitchen, Mason Plus. Cut up the shrimp, cut up the meat, cut up the vegetables, get that all out of the way. Pino, you know, they need to be like square matchsticks. Okay. Then you work on the filling. You need to chop the pork ASAP and get it whipping. You got it. Do you gotta move? Gotta move, moving. No, you can leave a couple. Do you think with these tag team challenges that there is one leader that emerges? Well, that's the only way it'll work. Take half the carrots, and I want you to put sugar and rice wine vinegar in it. Taste it, taste it. It's, it's good. My game plan is listen to Tamara. She knows a lot more about dim sum than I do. I think Tamara is the strong one in that team. Switch! You kidding me? Cut that pork. We're just going to get everything ready. What have you done? We've done the filling. I'm We've done filling. the... Now we're going to prep the spring roll. So do I have to slice them this way first? Just straight. Straight down. Thin slices? Thin slices, yes. Thin, exactly like the cabbage. When they're all done, sliced, prep, what are you going to do with them? You need to have a vision. You need to know what you're working towards in order to get this done. Yes, chef. You're the one who's guiding Pino. You're the one who knows what they're doing. Is it a one-man show? No, chef. You sure? Yes, chef. Switch! Switch! Okay, move, move, move. My turn, my turn. Move, move. You have 30 minutes remaining. Your final 30 minutes. We can't taste anymore. We just got to make them. Your filling should be done. You should be making dumplings. Pino's pacing like he's in the delivery room. I think it's twins. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So which one is the toughest to shape? Hakao, definitely. How are you at the, the Hakao? Which one's that one? I... Shrimp with the rice wrapper. I can fold it. Those are my toughest. I can do everything else. OK, then I'll do those. You know how to do spring rolls? Uh, I don't know how to fold them perfectly. I can walk you through it. Yeah, I'll roll it. No problem. How many you got so far? I got three done. Nice. See if you can make those up before we switch. Pump it out, darling. Pump it out. Good? Yes. Dump them out here and salt they them. Done? Yeah. Just salt it. OK, done. Done. Just leave them. Switch. Okay. Come on. Five minutes left. Five minutes left. Yeah, it's really hard to tell who's doing the best right now. Eric, this is the biggest five minutes of your life. I think the final couple of minutes is going to be very important. Remember, they still have to put it together in the platter. Tamara, just put everything on this plate. You got this, Marita. Good job. Eric, those are done. Two minutes left. I need the sumac here. I can't do anything. Don't forget to put the caviar on top, remember? A little bit of tobacco on top. For your grandfather! One minute, pass me on the platter! This is all you, girl! Good job, Rita, you got this! 30 seconds! Ah! Yes, Tamara! I want beautiful presentation! I can't watch this. 10, 9, 8, Whoa! 7, 6, 5, 4, oh my God. 3, We never got those. 2, things. 1, stop! Looks impressive. Who did what? It was pretty much a joint effort. Tamara did a lot more of the seasoning because she has a keener sense on what to make in the dim sum. Pino was able to do all the other stuff when we're switching off that I'm not able to. It was a time to lead and a time to follow, and this time for me was definitely a time to follow. Spring roll, out of color is nice. I must say, it's very good. Thank you, Chef. Seasoned nicely, deep frying, crispy, and not greasy. Now, hakao, shrimp dumpling, is the hardest one. Pastry, and also the thickness, I think you got it right. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, seasoning, a little bit bland. But other than that, very impressive. Thank Coming you. Coming from you, that's amazing. That's, Thank you, yeah. Chef. So tell me what you put into the sumai. We have some pork, we have sugar, sesame oil, 
and shiitake mushrooms. So I should be able to taste all those flavors? Yes, Chef. Did you taste it yourselves? We did, actually. You know what? Those flavors came through. Thank you very much, chefs. Order, chef. All right. Let's check out these plates. Yep, chef. Tamara. Yes, chef. These beets look beautiful. Finally, we have a competition here. You're starting to plate like you mean it, right? Yes, chef. Good, chef. It's better than good. Thank it's you. really amazing. Thank you, chef. I'm, I'm beyond impressed, I'll be Thank honest you, with you. Thank you, chef. The red team rocks. Rocks, 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 the appetizer round. Like, we are killing it. And according to the diners, both teams are knocking it out of the park. Yum, man. Eh? I've had many beet salads, but none quite presented like this. The presentation is beautiful. The texture is great. It's cooked to perfection. Honestly, everything is like a party in my mouth. That's really good. I'm loving this. Customer feedback will be taken into account, but ultimately, the judges will choose the winning team. Both these plates are beautiful. I would have to agree that the plates look stunning. The blue team's plating was a little messy. It wasn't as refined. Hey, hey, stop talking. Let's taste. Let's taste. I'm hungry. Try the blue team. That's beautiful. I mean, that is, to me, perfection. A little bit rare on the inside. Now let's compare the red team to the blue team. I would say this sea scallop is a little salty. Kayla was a little heavy-handed, I think. OK, guys, let's move on to the next appetizer. When you put the two side by side, you really notice how the presentations differ. The red team here seems to really have the edge on the presentation. It's plated properly. The proportions are all correct. The blue team, unfortunately, is very sparse. It's very light on the dressing. That's the only flaw, though. Let's try the blue team. Blue, OK. You know, I really love the texture. You know, you got the crunchy walnut. You got the hydrated beetroot juice. They pulled it off. Now, the red team here, the beet is cooked to perfection. Look at that. Absolutely perfect. I couldn't tell the difference if one of my cooks had plated this. Wow. You guys look too much. You should be eating, because this tastes absolutely perfect. The tricky part, now you have to synchronize halibut and yeah, venison. Yep. Perch, they chef. both take different times to cook, right? Perch, chef. So I'm on the venison, and it's not the easiest protein to cook. Fuck, that's hot. Kayla's going to cook the halibut. I'm dropping. No, we need to get his venison on first. And Tamara's going to plate both dishes. You're both quiet. Hey, Leave. Kayla, not yet. I got to drop it, or it's going to be a dead pan. Then no, leave no, the no, pan. No, no, Move no, it off no, the no, heat. No, Kayla, no, no, don't no. do it. I feel like I can't breathe, and I just have to pump out these dishes. Let me drop. Let me no, drop. No, not no, yet. No, no. I don't want you putting that hell of it in until he's put the venison in the oven. You yeah. got it. But despite Tamara's instructions, Kayla decides to start the halibut. How far is this away? This is six minutes away, Chef. You sure about that? Yes, Chef. Six minutes? And six minutes here. Yeah. So if this is six minutes away and your venison's six the minutes away, to rest for what about minutes. resting? Yeah. So your venison's ten minutes away. Yeah. So in ten minutes, this fish will be overcooked. Okay, Chef. Right? Kayla, what did I tell you about the fish? Kayla, if you're not going to listen, you're going to be off the station. Fuck. Dead fish. Yeah. Dead, Dead fish. fish. Get a new one. Over on the blue team, Eric has his proteins under control, and the first dishes are ready to leave the kitchen. Some nice-looking plates here. Service. But the red team continues to struggle, and one of their tables is getting restless. Can I talk you into staying just five more minutes to give us another chance to try and get your food out? Okay. Five minutes. We have to go. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. All right. All right. I'm losing my appetite. I've just had table seven grab me and tell me that if they cannot get their main courses in five minutes, they're going to leave. Tamara? Yes, Chef. Table seven is you. Yes, Chef. This table is leaving the restaurant if the food is not there in one minute. How did that happen? We need those fish now. We need them plated now. I'm totally overwhelmed. I'm not trying to yell at her because I'm a Put them on the plate. I'm trying to yell at her so we can win. Yes, Chef. Guys, honestly, we've got tables that are going to walk out any minute. Get plating! Get plating! Yes, we I gotta get the venison in it, one guys. sec here. If they leave because of your dishes, there's gonna be huge consequences. They left. They couldn't Great. wait any longer. Table yeah. seven, Tamara has walked Just out. Just walked out. Table seven is you. That's never, ever happened in this restaurant. Let's go. Yes, Chef. Work together as a team. I need you to help her with signs and need plating. Okay, I'm Okay, we have I enough venison. Signs. Yeah. Okay, we lost one. Sucks. Brutal. So we just got to be focused. Service! But just as the red team starts to hit their rhythm, the blue team loses theirs. OK, next. We're doing them at the same time. OK, nice hot pan. We're almost there, guys. We can do this. With Claudio's help, the blue team gets back on track. Claudio, how long? You're going to have everything up in six minutes. Six everything. minutes. 
Okay, start plating. Let's go. And the red team continues to pump out orders. Order! Some nice looking plates here Thank for the you, red chef. team. Service. We kind of just get the groove going. Calibets are ready. Service. Table eight. Let's go, guys. We got a rhythm now. Let's push it out. Oh, mine's good. I like the halibut, and I like this coconut broth. It's kind of the best thing I've ever had. Oh, my God. It's really good. Service. Come on, service. Service. The last plate goes out. Are we done? Yeah, we're done. Woo! Being here and working in a professional kitchen makes me want to have a restaurant more than ever. My father passed away when I was young, and he was a restaurateur. You did such a good job. My dad would have been so proud of me running this kitchen tonight. Marita. Yes, chef. Because you had the best dish in the last pressure test, we're going to give you an important choice. Who would you like to cook with today? You can choose to cook with just one partner, or you can build yourself a team of three. Think carefully. Group dynamics can be complicated. Chef, I will be only picking one person today. My choice is going to be someone I know will work as fast as I can and will be on the same page as I am. And that person is Tamara. Maybe she should pick a third person, because if we do go to a pressure test, then it should be somebody that we can beat. The two of us are two moms. Nobody knows how to cook for a family better than two moms who do it every day. Moms get it done. Tamara, how is it to have your family here? It's amazing seeing my husband and my kids, and the first thing they asked was, what's for supper? So <laughs> I can't wait to cook for them today. Can you get me all the spices? Seeing my family, I am ready to win this challenge. I'm making the cried chicken curry from scratch. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. Curry in a hurry. I'm roasting all my spices into a curry paste. I'm really worried that I don't have enough time to make the flavors really come out like how I would at home. Marita and Tamara could be at a potential disadvantage because there's only two of them in that team. If they had the third person, they could be doing what the blue team is doing and having someone do a lot of the prep because they're having to cook for 12 individuals today. I need the ginger paste and the garlic paste. OK, well, uh, let me turn down the heat. I put the garlic and ginger in and they burn within a couple seconds. My pans are too hot and I have to start over. There's a deep concern with Tamara right now. She burnt her curry. I put on a second pan of garlic, and it does the same. It burns right off the bat. If I burn one little speck of it, the whole flavor of the curry will be ruined. If this next curry burn, and we just serve plain chicken, honestly, I think I'm going home. Marita, this is almost done. I want you to just taste this, OK? Oh, my god. Delicious. Finally, I get it right. Thanks, Marita. The red team. Congratulations, Marita and Tamara. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. You're safe from elimination and automatically have a place in the final four. Just think about my kids and why I'm here and what I'm supposed to be doing here. Just trying to do my best. There's so much good stuff in that box between the veal the sausage, the cheese, the grana padano. You could make fresh pasta. You could do a classic veal dish. The opportunities are limitless. I'm making veal uh, loin medallions with a spatzel, fried capers, a little tomato salad, and I'll be right back. <laughs> if they overcomplicate it, I think that could be a big problem for them. You got to keep things pure and simple. With great classic Italian ingredients like this, it's often a case of less is more. Less is more. I'm worried about the dish tasting good. It's just it, how everything will come together. My pan is smoking because I overheated it too long, so I get rid of it. I'm dying inside. I'm going crazy inside. I'm thinking, OK, next step, next step, next step. OK, Tamara, what do you got going on? What are you going to make? Uh, I'm going to do uh, veal uh, loin medallions with a spatzel. Chef, I do fusion. You do fusion? Yes, chef. Fusion without confusion? Yeah, absolutely, chef. Where's your veal loin? Hopefully, that's cooking already. In about five minutes, I'm going to put it on. So you haven't started cooking the veal, the veal loin yet? No, chef. I'm from Alberta, so I'm very familiar with proteins. I think that's definitely one of my strong points. I'm a very positive person, but, you know, one dish will send you home. Good luck. Tamara, tell me about it. Veal loin boiled and pan fried, some spatzel, tomato uh, reduction, and a tomato salad. So what did you think of this challenge? 
I think it was a really tough challenge. I'm a bit creative, and I like to kind of go outside the box. And today, I had to stay within the box. This is a very, very ambitious dish. Showing off a little bit here, right? Uh, no, I wanted to. You're not showing off? No. If I... you're not going to show off now, when, when are you going to show well, off? I'm a bit of a poker player. I wanted to do something that is going to set me apart from the rest of them. You have a perfectly cooked veal loin. Thank you. What is that with you Canadians? We know how to cook our meat. You know how to cook your meat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what did you season it with? Just some salt and pepper. I think that this dish shows your ambition, but also at the same time shows a bit of your inexperience. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. I see the tomato salad, super simple, super straightforward, and super safe, which is a little unlike you. And then on the other side, it is far more gutsy and adventurous. Veal, nicely cooked. And I think you could have put considerably more white wine with that tomato base that you had there, more olive oil, and had a much more luscious sauce. It's not perfect, but it's a decent dish. Thank you. Please join the others. Tamara. Tamara, you used to be a professional poker player, and for a long time, it was hard for us to get a read on you. Recently, however, you showed us your hand with a series of excellent dishes. That's a big, big flavor. It's a very, very nice dish. It was enough to show us and the rest of Canada what your husband and two little girls already know. You are an excellent cook. Please come up and say goodbye. Thank you very much, Chef. It's been a pleasure. I cook with soul and I cook with my heart every single time. I'm going to try to impress today. I'm not playing it safe, that's for sure. I came here as a mom and teacher. I was blown away by the flavors. I'm a yes. And I'm leaving as an educated, proud home cook. My dad would have been so proud of me. He's the one that introduced me into the culinary world. 